Anthony Davis, he was center stage last night against the Timberwolves. Remember, LeBron James was not playing in this one. He was rocking a beanie on the sidelines on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. Uh, this is the first quarter. The Lakers up three here. Anthony Davis gets the pass, hits a nice little mid-range jumper here. Brian, you were talking about this being a game where the others could prove it to LeBron James. AD did his part, but the Timberwolves, they're serious. Yeah, they wanted to win this game coming off a loss. And the thing about the Lakers, Anthony Davis has been playing great, and they haven't been taking advantage. He played through an ankle injury to play this game. A nice play there from Anthony Edwards. Second quarter, the Wolves up by three at this point. Carl Anthony Towns. The Wolves lead 63-59 at halftime. Third quarter here. The Lakers, they stayed in this one. Down three. Anthony Davis drains the jumper. Absolutely. Look, classic turnaround, but the two big fellas going at it, that's what we love. And then you had that man right there. <laughs> Ant-Man. Anthony Edwards helps the Timberwolves reclaim the lead. They were up 87-83 heading into the final frame. Anthony Davis, Darvin Ham said he wanted six of these a game. Well, he nails that one. But that's what you need, more pick and roll action when AD, where D'Angelo Russell could be the playmaker to get him easier basket. Watch out, you had an aggressive Carl Anthony Towns. He had 21 points, six rebounds in this one. And then Anthony Edwards, 27 points, seven rebounds. You can't measure the emotion there. Mike Connolly goes to work, rains the three. Oh, straight professional right Puts there. the game away. Here's Anthony Davis on the Lakers losing streak. It's NBA season. You know, there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. Um, you know, right now we're in that down period. Uh, you know, we're losing four in a row. Obviously, you know, we know what the team we can be. Um, you know, it just happened that, uh, that experience from last year. We just got to get back to winning. Um, it's that simple. All right, so here's where we stand. The Lakers, they've lost four in a row. It doesn't get easier anytime soon. Three of their next four, they're against teams with the top five win percentages in the entire NBA. And Perk, 2024 is right around the corner at this point. We are counting down the final days of 2023 here, and, and there's a real chance that the Lakers can enter January with a losing record here. So how long can they just afford to trust that they have enough right now? Not long at all, and especially Darvin Ham. Look, I'm not I'm not going to go out on the ledge right now and say that Darvin Ham is on the hot seat, although I want to. But I will say this. Don't get too comfortable if I'm Darvin Ham. When you talk about LeBron James and Rob Palik and Anthony <clears throat> Davis, you got to be on your best stuff. They want greatness. And a lot of people have been questioning his rotations. Mm. A lot of que people have been questioning, you know, uh, his play calling. You know, and... Here's the thing, right? When you're dealing with an organization like the Lakers, we have to remember, they, fried, they fired Frank Vogel. Frank Vogel helped them hang a banner. Mm -hmm. They won a championship for, for Frank Vogel. Is what are you doing for me right now? Hey, Darvin Ham just hung a banner last week. <laughs> I knew <laughs> that's the standard. No, I knew you were going there. Don't get me started. <laughs> the players, over the last couple of days, the players have been chirping a little bit on the record about their frustrations yeah. about rotations and role. I mean, we saw D'Angelo Russell after the game last night talk about, you know, his role a little bit. We saw, we, you know, Anthony Davis last night was talking about how it's tough because the team's been inconsistent. Um, LeBron the other night was talking about that. That's, I'm not freaking out about that, Perk, because when a team is on a losing streak, you start to get that stuff. That happens in the NBA. The thing about it is the Lakers can't really functionally really consider any moves until January 15th because of the contracts they signed last year. They can't really have any discussions. So they can very simply look you in the eye yeah. and say, we don't, we're not talking about trades. We're, not, we're focused on the team we have and honestly be telling the truth because of that January 15th. Look, here's the bottom line with the Lakers, and you can point to Darvin Ham, you can point to the players, you can point to the front office. This is a bad offensive team. They're 24th in offensive efficiency. They're behind the Wizards, the Washington Wizards, the mm. team that plays in Washington. They were a bad offense <laughs> last now. year. They were a bad offense in the playoffs last year, and they are going nowhere until they fix this offense and at least get it up to average, slightly above average, to the point where their defense can win them games. Because I know they made the conference finals last year with a mediocre offense. Yep. This is a different Western Conference. You're not going to be able to go through the Grizzlies with all the John Morant turmoil and the injuries and all of that. You're not going to be able to do that. This team just doesn't score enough. And to me, the in-house solution is, I don't know why they paid Austin Reeves all this money yeah. and he comes off the bench and he plays 26, 27 minutes. The D'Lo, Reddish, 
Torian Prince trio in the starting five, they're all nice players. That's not dynamic enough around LeBron and AD. They either need to just start Reeves or play him more. And that's really the best in-house solution they have because the bottom line is this. If they can't score, they are going nowhere serious. And right now they can't score and teams are hitting shots against them all of a sudden. Well, here's what I'm gonna say to you about that, Zach. Darvin Ham said within the last 48 hours, he has no intention of changing the starting lineup and that he sees Austin I Reeves as 27 to anyway. 29 minutes is what he wants him at because he doesn't want to wear him out. <laughs> so, like, asked and answered, at least for the time being, by the head coach uh, in those two situations. Uh, another thing. Well, I, I don't like the answer. I, I You're don't, not alone. I like I your hat. <laughs> I don't, I don't either. And I had to answer, move LeBron to the point guard and change your starting five if you're Darvin Ham. Because I'm looking at it right now, and I don't want, right now, I don't want everybody to be fooled by the end season tournament. Because I'm looking, I just looked at the Lakers game that, the games that they played, and they don't have not one, you know what I'm about to say, Balika, signature win. They haven't beat one team that we, that, that's a contender this season. Yes, they beat the Phoenix Suns, but everybody is beating the Phoenix Suns. They lost to Philly. They lost to the Nuggets. They lost to Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. They lost to Minnesota. Yep. I mean, they don't have that signature win. And again, going back to Darvin Ham, you have to make adjustments. Uh, Austin Reeves, what are, what are we talking about? So they, they lost to the Bulls the other night, and so of course this is under a magnifying glass. You mentioned offense, so I'm just going to ask the question, Brian, are they considering kicking the tires on Zach Levine? For right now, I don't believe so. I think their intention, and we are in December, as you can tell by all this beautiful, <laughs> uh, their intention right now and is Zach's hat. to stick with this team. Okay. And they believe that this team can work. They believe defense and superstars, which is what they have, which is why they won the in-season tournament. Okay, well, if they're sticking with what we have, then let's take a trip up the Western standings here because no matter what, the Timberwolves are going to have the best record in the West after the Christmas games. And recent history says that matters, right? Excluding the shortened 2020-2021 season that began just before Christmas, right? The last three West leaders at the end of the day on Christmas all went on to win the title. I mean, look at that. So if that's what history tells us, Zach, we've gotten to the point that we know the Wolves, they might be legit, but is Minnesota, are they just a regular season good or are they actually championship contender good? Do we need to start talking about them that way? I think their championship contender is good. And look, it's, it's a little bit of an unfair question because you're regular season good until you win a playoff series. And this yeah. team hasn't won a playoff series yet, but I think they're absolutely legit. I think their record, their point differential, their defense, everything about them says legit, 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 too can legit win three or four quit. playoff series. The two <laughs> questions, the two questions they're going to have to answer when they get to the playoffs. And by the way, the pressure on them is going to be enormous in the playoffs. The expectations are here. Yeah. Number one, Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns. Can you make sound decisions with the ball against the elite defenses when it really, really matters? And number two, are they going to face a team like the Clippers, for instance, who tries to small ball Rudy Gobert into trouble or off the floor? And I think they can answer both of those questions in the affirmative. I think Ant and Cat are going to be ready. And I think this team, with all the size and versatility they have around Gobert, is, is not quite maybe immune to that strategy, but much better equipped to deal with it. So I think this team is ready, and they play the Nuggets Tough That's as hell. That's what I want to talk about. So the team, I'm not focused on the Clippers right now. I'm focused on the Nuggets. Okay, the Nuggets have Jokic. That is one of the big reasons why they're awesome. Why else are they awesome? Because they're huge. Because when they built this roster, they said, we still believe in size, and we're going to have a gigantic roster. Who built the Nuggets? Tim Connolly. I believe it was Tim Connolly. Look at the moves since he came to Minnesota. Trade for Gobert. Protect Jaden McDaniels in that trade. Yep. Go sign um, uh, Kyle Anderson. Oh, this is Re sign an Easter egg. Nas Reed. He wants to have a giant team. Look at the team he's built. A giant team. Guess who gives the, the Nuggets more trouble than any other team in the West? Timberwolves. The giant Timberwolves. Oh. So, yes, they've got to prove it. I, we talked about this week. They're in a 16 game stretch against teams with winning records. They are 4 and 2 in that stretch. Let's check back in mid January after they come back, if they get through that. But this team has been designed and built by Tim Connolly under the same auspices of his Nuggets team. Now, they don't have Jokic. Mm -hmm. They do have Ant, but they are being designed to beat the Nuggets because they are being built by the same man. I agree with you 100%. And if we're asking the question, 
Are they pretenders or contenders? I'm with Zach. They're legit title contenders. Mm. It's a lot of teams out there that got a lot to prove. But again, we talk about their starting five and all the pieces that they have when it comes down to their starting five. One of the best starting fives in the league. But you talk about Nas Reed. And you talk about that matchup in case they have to go against a smaller team and go small. Nas Reed could go, you know, one through five. He's very versatile. Look, they, they, they're they the number one seed in the Western Conference. Mm -hmm. Hear me out, Malika. They're the number one seed in the Western Conference. And the best thing for a young team like the Minnesota Timberwolves is to get home court advantage. And right now, throughout the course of this regular season, they're establishing a great home court so that any team in a seven-game series have to go and face them, it's going to be a problem.